You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Reisinger. We begin with breaking news. An officer involved shooting right here in Billings that has left one person dead. Here's what we know so far. A member or members of the U.S. Marshals Violent Offender Task Force shot and killed a suspect in the 700 block of Cook Avenue. Now, the marshals were attempting to apprehend that suspect at a residence when that incident occurred around 630 this evening, according to Billings Assistant Police Chief Jeremy House. Cook Avenue now closed between 7th and 8th Street, while Billings Police investigate the shooting. We'll have a live report coming up from the scene tonight on Q2 News at 10. A Billings woman arrested last week after a stabbing death near Terry Park is now charged with murder. Prosecutors have filed a deliberate homicide charge against 38-year-old Charlotte Rodarte in what's described as a meth deal gone bad. Charging documents state the suspect repeatedly stabbed 36-year-old Leon Gustafson in the chest in her home at 612 Terry Avenue on June 12th. Gustafson was later found dead in front of the house. Charlotte Rodarte and her brother Dustin Rodarte were arrested that night in Lockwood, the suspect with blood on her hands. Dustin Rodarte, who's been released from jail, told police his sister stabbed Gustafson multiple times while calling him a snitch. Charlotte Rodarte is set to make her first court appearance tomorrow. Well, two women from Philadelphia have been sentenced for being off trail and inside a thermal area at Yellowstone National Park. Back on June 11, 31-year-old Tara Davoli and 30-year-old Sarah Piotrowski were seen leaving the boardwalk and walking in a thermal area in the Midway Geyser Basin. Park officials say they damaged fragile environment in that area. The women were sentenced to two days in jail, fined $350 in order to pay restitution. They've also been banned from Yellowstone National Park for two years. Custer County Health Authorities moved swift and certain after a recent burst in confirmed COVID-19 cases. The Custer County Miles City Unified Command strongly recommending the county return to phase one of the governor's reopening plan. Now that recommendation effective immediately and for the next two weeks. Officials say all local businesses, athletics, community events and assemblies return to phase one. The recommendation is to go back to no more than 10 people at public gatherings, avoid non-essential travel. Custer County reported three positive cases on Monday, six more yesterday. The health officer says the total of 19 cases puts Custer on par per capita with much bigger cities. They've had these positives trickle in over the matter of months. We've had all of our positives in the last two weeks. We don't have the public health resources. We don't have the healthcare resources that a lot of these larger jurisdictions do. What we're gonna do is watch and see what happens over those next two weeks and change, again, some of our tactics, again, to really focus on workers and people who are at very high risk, keeping them shielded from this outbreak at that point. Of the sort uh, to uh, support public health nurses, the Montana National Guard will be in Custer County tomorrow, June 19th and Saturday, June 20th, to help run a free drive through testing event at the Eastern Montana Fairgrounds. State health authorities are catching up with Montana counties on the latest confirmed cases today. The state reporting its largest single day jump since back in March. Take a look here. The state now reporting 25 new confirmed cases. As we reported yesterday, four of those cases are in Bighorn County, four children all under the age of 10, four more in Flathead, Gallatin, and another three in Yellowstone counties are reported. Fergus County announces its first two cases, and Valley County along the High Line reports its first positive. So Montana health care providers are encouraging Governor Steve Bullock to continue efforts to expand Medicaid coverage in Montana. They say it's critical for patients dealing with the pandemic. They also say even with the COVID crisis, the coverage is an important way to help people improve their quality of life. MTN's Dennis Bragg has more. During a roundtable discussion Thursday at Missoula's Partnership Health Center, Governor Bullock noted how the legislature's decision to expand Medicaid couldn't have been timed better, giving Montanans a lifeline for the pandemic. Medicaid expansion will cover the costs of COVID-19 related treatments as well as continue to pay for routine medical care. Low-income adults in states that didn't expand Medicaid wouldn't be eligible for that Medicaid coverage. Just as importantly, Bullock says the expansion has given Montana's rural hospitals an important financial foothold at a time when many small hospitals across the country are closing. 
But those participating in the discussion noted that the expanded coverage is allowing health centers to make a dramatic difference in people's lives. CEO Lori Francis explained the percentage of patients with no insurance has dropped from 50% to 12% since the latest expansion. That's allowing the clinic to help people address other social changes, like housing and underemployment, that have a direct impact on public health and Montana's economy. There's a huge stumbling blocks in our society that are not the fault of the individual. And it's a failure of the system, not of the individual. And we need to have things like Medicaid as a safety net to help them. Cork told the governor of the painful experience of trying to help a rancher navigate through a health crisis while in fear of losing his livelihood. Missoula small business owner Amy Casso told the emotional story of the fear and uncertainty of dealing with a breast cancer diagnosis while self-employed. Circumstances tough enough already, but doubly difficult during a pandemic. It becomes out much more essential. I mean, no one should be making a decision whether to forego preventative care or making sure that the only place that they get care is an emergency room because they're trying to choose between literally keeping, you know, a roof over their head or addressing their health care needs. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Governor Bullock says the state is still waiting for word from the federal government on the latest round of Medicaid waivers, but says Montana will be able to continue operating under the uh, most recent state legislation. All right, well, tomorrow, communities all across the nation will celebrate Juneteenth. Friday, June 19th, marks the end of slavery here in our country. Your billing celebrations are scheduled to take place at South Park on Saturday. Kitu's Mitch Leggy brings us a look ahead at the celebration. On June 19th, 1865, Union Major General Gordon Granger landed in Galveston, Texas, bringing news that the Civil War was over and President Abraham Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing slaves in the Confederate States. Juneteenth, a combination of the words June and 19th, is the holiday that emerged from this historic event. State Senator Margie McDonald was behind legislation in 2017 that officially recognized Juneteenth in the state government. It's interesting as a holiday because it kind of bubbled up from the community, as opposed to coming from on high or, you know, Washington, D.C. It's really, for 150 years, it's been celebrated. And it, in some states, especially in the South, it is huge. But we in Montana, we're not so aware of it. We're learning. In Billings, Juneteenth has been celebrated for over a decade. This year's celebrations were organized with the help of the Black Heritage Foundation of Yellowstone County. Pastor Tracy J. Starr is a member of the organization. He sees the holiday as an opportunity for black Americans to celebrate their history. Well, if I don't talk about my past, how do I embrace my now? How do I embrace who I am as a black man if I'm told to let my history go? Juneteenth has allowed me to embrace that. Juneteenth comes this year about a month after the death of George Floyd, sparking protests against police brutality across the country. Starr said the Juneteenth event in Billings is an opportunity for all to learn about black Americans' experiences. Until we get to the point to where we're willing to share our history and everybody that's on the receiving end is ready to listen to everybody's history and accept the fact that these things did happen. We cannot ignore that they happened. It's about what can we do so these things don't continue to happen. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Thanks, Mitch. And here's a quick look at the details for Saturday. Juneteenth kicks off at South Park starting at 1 p.m., wraps up at 5. A selection of speakers will address the crowd starting at 3 o'clock. Everyone attending is encouraged to wear a mask and practice social distancing. And the usual potluck barbecue will re be replaced with a grab-and-go style meal. Elder Grove School showed off its brand new middle school to staff yesterday. Now the district is asking for additional funds to fill the building with resources aimed at growing alongside a rising population base. The Far West End District has put a $599,000 levy initiative on the July 7th ballot. Elder Grove voters haven't passed a school levy in 33 years, defeating the most recent effort in 2015 by a 54 to 46 margin. The main goal of the new levy is to add trade industry elective classes to prepare students for the job force. The reality that we want to create here in this middle school is to create tomorrow's tradesmen today. 
we are looking at some industrial art opportunities and some art offerings that we haven't had before. And this levy would give us that opportunity and so many more to advance our students' futures. We're looking at a metals lab and a wood lab and a ceramics opportunity and things that, you know, even with the industrial arts piece, could provide kids the opportunity to get jobs in high school because of their experience here with that elective. The proposal number is 73% of the maximum the school board could have asked for. Schmidt says they did the math and arrived at the specific figure they need to continue to operate successfully for the growing district. Well, you may have noticed that moths have made their return from the summer season, and it seems to be that there's a lot of them right now. Yellowstone County Horticultural Assistant Amy Grandpre says blame the rain because there's more moisture in the air. Now she says the moths start their lives as army cutworms. The cutworms are currently hatching due to the warmer climate and will soon migrate to the Rocky Mountains. And uh, they're coming back. Those insects return in late August to lay up as many as 3,000 eggs per female cutworm. And they're joined at that time by the pale western cutworm, which appears in late August. As the moths make shelter in our homes, garages, and patio areas, people may be happy to know there is an easy trick to get rid of them. Uh, one of the things that's a really quick cleanup is if you can make a nice basin, uh, whether that be a, a dish pan or five gallon bucket uh, full of frothy water. So, you know, get some water in there, put in a few good squirts of some dishwashing soap, froth up the foam, and then uh, put a high wattage bulb uh, with the lampshade off over that, about three or four inches above that. And as they hit that, they'll end up in the suds and that drowns them. So, real nice way to kind of clean it up. And Grand Prix tells us if interested, the Yellowstone Extension Office has a bulletin that further explains the life cycles of both of the cutworm species that we are and will be seeing this summer. For more information, you can also visit KTVQ.com. Still to come on tonight's 9 o'clock news, COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on nursing homes, but one in Missoula has used some creative thinking to keep its residents and staff healthy. That story coming in a, in a bit, but First, Bob McGuire is coming back with your complete seven-day forecast.